The Phoenix Program Vietnamese, Chen Dic Phung Hoang, a word related to Feng Wang, the Chinese Phoenix, was a program designed, coordinated, and executed by the United States Central Intelligence Agency CIA, United States Special Operations Forces, U.S. Army Intelligence Collection Units from the U.S. Military Assistance Command, Vietnam MACV. The Joint Service Command that provided command and control for all U.S. advisory and assistance efforts in Vietnam, Special Forces operatives from the Australian Army Training Team Vietnam AATTV, and the Republic of Vietnam's South Vietnam security apparatus during the Vietnam War. The program was designed to identify and destroy the Viet Cong VC via infiltration, capture, counterterrorism, interrogation, and assassination. The CIA described it as a set of programs that sought to attack and destroy the political infrastructure of the Viet Cong. History The major two components of the program were Provincial Reconnaissance Units and Regional Interrogation Centers. PRUs would kill or capture suspected VC members, as well as civilians who were thought to have information on VC activities. Many of these people were taken to interrogation centers and were tortured in an attempt to gain intelligence on VC activities in the area. The information extracted at the centers was given to military commanders, who would use it to task the PRU with further capture and assassination missions. The program's effectiveness was measured in the number of VC members who were neutralized a euphemism meaning imprisoned persuaded to defect or killed the program was in operation between 1965 and 1972 and similar efforts existed both before and after that period by 1972 phoenix operatives had neutralized 81,740 suspected VC operatives informants and supporters of whom between 26,000 and 41,000 were killed during the same 1965–1972 period the VC killed 33,052 South Vietnamese village officials and civil servants, the interrogation centers and PRUs were developed by the CIA's Saigon Station Chief Pierre de Silva. De Silva was a proponent of a military strategy known as counterterrorism, which encompasses military tactics and techniques that government, military, law enforcement, and intelligence agencies use to combat or prevent terrorist activities, and that it should be applied strategically to enemy civilians in order to reduce civilian support for the VC. The PRUs were designed with this in mind, and began targeting suspected VC members in 1964. Originally, the PRUs were known as counter terror teams, but they were renamed to provincial reconnaissance units after CIA officials. Became wary of the adverse publicity surrounding the use of the word terror. In 1967, all pacification efforts by the United States had come under the authority of the Civil Operations and Revolutionary Development Support, or CORDS. CORDS had many different programs within it, including the creation of a peasant militia which by 1971 had a strength of about 500,000. In 1967, as part of CORDS, the Intelligence Coordination and Exploitation Program was created, from a plan drafted by Nelson Brickham partly inspired by David Galula's Counterinsurgency Warfare 1964, a book based on Galula's experiences in the Algerian War which Brickham was very taken with and carried with him around Vietnam. The purpose of the organization centered on gathering information on the VC. It was renamed Phoenix later in the same year. The South Vietnamese program was called Phung Ho Ang, after a mythical bird that appeared as a sign of prosperity and luck. The 1968 Tet Offensive showed the importance of the VC infrastructure, and the military setback for the U.S. made it politically more palatable for the new program to be implemented. By 1970 there were 704 U.S. Phoenix advisors throughout South Vietnam. Officially, Phoenix operations continued until December 1972, although certain aspects continued until the fall of Saigon in 1975. <laughs> operations The chief aspect of the Phoenix program was the collection of intelligence information. VC members would then be captured, converted, or killed. 
emphasis for the enforcement of the operation was placed on local government militia and police forces, rather than the military, as the main operational arm of the program. Author and journalist Douglas Valentine states that, "...central to Phoenix is the fact that it targeted civilians, not soldiers." The Phoenix program took place under special laws that allowed the arrest and prosecution of suspected communists. To avoid abuses such as phony accusations for personal reasons, or to rein in overzealous officials who might not be diligent enough in pursuing evidence before making arrests, the laws required three separate sources of evidence to convict an individual targeted for neutralization. If a suspected VC member was found guilty, he or she could be held in prison for two years, with renewable two-year sentences totaling up to six years. According to MACV Directive 381-41, the intent of Phoenix was to attack the VC with a "...rifle shot rather than a shotgun approach to target key political leaders, command, control elements and activists in the VCI Viet Cong infrastructure." Heavy-handed operations—such as random cordons and searches, large-scale and lengthy detentions of innocent civilians, and excessive use of firepower had a negative effect on the civilian population. Intelligence derived from interrogations was often used to carry out search and destroy missions aimed at finding and killing VC members. Topic: <reported>, reported torture. Methods of reported torture detailed by author Douglas Valentine that were used at the interrogation centers included Rape, gang rape, rape using eels, snakes, or hard objects, and rape followed by murder, electric shock the bell telephone hour rendered by attaching wires to the genitals or other sensitive parts of the body, like the tongue, the water treatment, the airplane in which the prisoner's arms were tied behind the back, and the rope looped over a hook on the ceiling, suspending the prisoner in mid-air, after which he or she was beaten, beatings with rubber hoses and whips, the use of police dogs to maul prisoners. Military intelligence officer K. Barton Osborne reports that he witnessed the following use of torture. The use of the insertion of the six-inch dowel into the canal of one of my detainee's ears, and the tapping through the brain until dead. The starvation to death in a cage, of a Vietnamese woman who was suspected of being part of the local political education cadre in one of the local villages. The use of electronic gear such as sealed telephones attached to both the women's vaginas and men's testicles to shock them into submission. The reported torture was carried out by South Vietnamese forces with the CIA and special forces playing a supervisory role. <laughs> Targeted killings Phoenix operations often aimed to assassinate targets, or resulted in their deaths through other means. PRU units often anticipated resistance in disputed areas, and often operated on a shoot-first basis. Innocent civilians were also sometimes killed. William Colby claimed that the program never sanctioned the "...premeditated killing of a civilian in a non-combat situation," and other military personnel stated that capturing VC members was more important than killing them. Lieutenant Vincent Okamoto, an intelligence liaison officer for the Phoenix program for two months in 1968 and a recipient of the Distinguished Service Cross said the following The problem was, how do you find the people on the blacklist? It's not like you had their address and telephone number. The normal procedure would be to go into a village and just grab someone and say, Where's new and so and so? Half the time the people were so afraid they would not say anything. Then a Phoenix team would take the informant, put a sandbag over his head, poke out two holes so he could see, put camo wire around his neck like a long leash, and walk him through the village and say, When we go by Nguyen's house scratch your head. Then that night Phoenix would come back, knock on the door, and say, April fool, motherfucker. Whoever answered the door would get wasted. As far as they were concerned whoever answered was a communist, including family members. Sometimes they'd come back to camp with ears to prove that they killed people. <inaudible> <inaudible> strategic effect Between 1968 and 1972, Phoenix neutralized 
81,740 people suspected of VC membership, of whom 26,369 were killed. A significant number of VC were killed, and between 1969 and 1971 the program was quite successful in destroying VC infrastructure in many important areas. By 1970, communist plans repeatedly emphasized attacking the government's pacification program and specifically targeted Phoenix officials. The VC also imposed quotas. In 1970, for example, communist officials near Da Nang in northern South Vietnam instructed their assassins to kill 1,400 persons deemed to be government tyrant s and to annihilate anyone involved with the pacification program. Several North Vietnamese officials have made statements about the effectiveness of Phoenix. According to William Colby, in the years since 1975, I have heard several references to North and South Vietnamese communists who state that, in their mind, the toughest period that they faced from 1960 to 1975 was the period from 1968 to 72 when the Phoenix program was at work. The CIA claimed that through Phoenix they were able to learn the identity and structure of the VCI in every province. Topic: <laughs> Public response and legal proceedings. The Phoenix program was not generally known during most of the time it was operational to either the American public or American officials in Washington. One of the first people to criticize Phoenix publicly was Ed Murphy, a native of Staten Island, New York in 1970. There was eventually a series of U.S. congressional hearings. In 1971, in the final day of hearing on U.S. assistance programs in Vietnam, a former serviceman named K. Milton Osborne described the Phoenix program as a sterile depersonalized murder program. Consequently, the military command in Vietnam issued a directive that reiterated that it had based the anti-VCI campaign on South Vietnamese law, that the program was in compliance with the laws of land warfare, and that U.S. personnel had the responsibility to report breaches of the law. Former CIA analyst Samuel A. Adams, in an interview with CBC News, talked about the program as basically an assassination program that also included torture. A former Phoenix intelligence officer, Barton Osborne, in an interview broadcast in 1975, talked about the torture practices used by the Americans and detailed a case in which a man was dragged out of the interrogation's hooch with a dowel protruding from his ear. The dowel had been tapped through in the course of torture to hit the brain. These were activities performed by American Marines. They would also kill people by throwing them out of helicopters to threaten and intimidate those they wanted to interrogate. Abuses were common. In many instances, rival Vietnamese would report their enemies as VC in order to get U.S. troops to kill them. In many cases, Phung Ho Ang chiefs were incompetent bureaucrats who used their positions to enrich themselves. Phoenix tried to address this problem by establishing monthly neutralization quotas, but these often led to fabrications or, worse, false arrests. In some cases, district officials accepted bribes from the VC to release certain suspects. After Phoenix program abuses began receiving negative publicity, the program was officially shut down, although it continued under the name Plan F6 with the government of South Vietnam in control. See also CIA activities in Vietnam William Colby Edward Lansdale Nguyen Hop Doan Vincent Okamoto Operation Condor Russell Tribunal Special Activities Division Tran Ngoc Chow United States War Crimes Vietnam War Crimes Working Group Winter Soldier Investigation Topic Notes equals equals citations <laughs>